three, two, one, and we're in. All right, welcome. This is my first podcast, guys, and I'm super excited. Right now, I'm here with Ali. I, I see your last name. Is it pronounced Coca? It's Ali Koja. 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 The C is like okay. a J, yes. Okay, okay, got you. All right, this is my first podcast, guys. Let's see how this goes. I'm really excited to jump into this. I, start, I did a podcast with him yesterday. He like basically interviewed me in a podcast, and I've always wanted to start one. And he just kind of pushed me over the edge. I fell in love with it, and I'm jumping into it. Full throttle. Let's get into it. Hell How yeah. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, oh, I'm ecstatic. I've been so excited to do this all day. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Finally doing this. Yeah, I actually woke up. I went to bed at 1 last night, and I woke up at 4.30, and I just couldn't fall back asleep. I don't know if it's because I was wow. excited. I've been thinking about this. I've been like <laughs> messaging people to do this. I have like some pretty big people already wanted to be on this with me here i can read off some names right now it's insane yeah, let's like see it. um i have you know have heard have you heard of beer pong john i think so yeah I think, I think i've heard of him before i have him interested i dm'd him and he goes yeah sure i'm down he has about 1.6 million seven, seven? I, I don't want to say mm-hmm. official number because i don't want to <laughs> offend anyone have you you know the sound the um, margo sound with the bearded dragon yes i have her she goes, nice. I'm so down. She seems, she seems so ecstatic about it. It was so cool. She seems like a really cool person just from DMing her a little bit. Use Pastor Ryan, which is insanely big for me because he's a big <laughs> reason I started this. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, this is awesome. All right, all right that's enough about me. All right, let's talk about you right now. Um, so when talking to you yesterday, I learned a little bit. And you live in Canada, which I think that's super cool. I've been talking to a lot of people from everywhere. And mm-hmm. so I just want to hear about Canada a little bit like you know like I'm assuming have you been to the U.S. before I used to actually live in the U.S. I was there from 2003 to 2011 okay yeah yeah I I was living in the U.S. for about for about seven and a half years that's awesome so I want to talk about like the differences and stuff like that like Mm -hmm. can you like kind of like I don't know talk about that a little bit like what's different about the U.S. (laughs) and Canada yeah man like whenever like I meet someone and they and they like and they like find out I used to live in U.S. and 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 now I live in Canada they always ask me which one's better? Which one is worse? They always ask like a, like a variety of questions. And here's what it comes down to. Canada, it's cold. First of all, I will say that. it's friggin' cold. If you, if, you, if you like the cold, do not come to Canada because I mean, seven to eight months out of the year, it's a frozen wasteland here. Ooh, yeah, that's but bad. we have free healthcare, which is awesome. You know, yes, we pay a bit more in taxes, but the healthcare is free. So if something happens, you know, you go to the doctor, and, and you have like a thorough medical examination. They do x-rays, they do CAT scans, they do um, ECGs, all these things. And it doesn't cost you a dime. That's, that's kind of insane. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard a little bit about free healthcare. Like I've always like, since, you know, like I live in the US, everyone's like, yes, we have the best of everything. That's obviously mm-hmm. not true. I mean, I love America, but we're <laughs> not the best in anything. I, well, maybe a couple things. I don't know. But healthcare, not too much. I, I had a surgery for my heart, it wasn't anything major. It wasn't like open mm-hmm. heart surgery. It was a little uh, ablation. I did a thing called SVT. I mean, my heart rate spiral out of control, which my highest rate was like over 300 beats per minute. Jesus. Score, go ahead. <laughs> Man, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was wild. But um, for that little surgery, it took, it was like a six hour procedure and, you know, like knocked out the whole time. And then I stayed in the hospital for up to like 16 hours, I guess, like overnight, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like a full 24 hours I was in that room. The whole thing costed about like $110,000. Which is insane. Like, yeah, like insurance paid for all, which is like, I'm super great, grateful for. That is great, but, man. Like, Holy shit. <laughs> but like, what scares me a little bit with that is the 30000 that we paid to the doctor, the 80000 went to the children's hospital. Wow. Like that, yeah. Like, and I feel like that's such a good thing in Canada to have free health care. But then like, I always hear like, if you ever need a transplant or anything, you're on this insanely long waiting list or like, it just everything takes longer with healthcare there. Is like, it, how's that work? Yeah, uh, that is true. I mean, as far as as far as tran- transplants go, I'm not like I'm not too I'm not too familiar with that. However, um, yeah, like if you go to the hospital, let's say you let's say uh, something happens, you gotta go to the hospital. Be prepared to wait a few hours. That I will say that. Yeah, it is not like it's not like you come in, they see you right away. If you get lucky, sure. Um, actually, a few months ago, uh, I went to the hospital at night because um, I passed out from coughing so much. And it was probably like 10 p.m. when I went to the hospital. And it's a hospital like up, up here in the suburbs, like an hour north of Toronto, of like downtown Toronto, right? And I was there until about 4 or 5 a.m. So like they did like, like, like some tests, but all in all, that took about, you know, six, seven hours. 
because they have only one doctor working at nights. Oh, wow. Yeah, only one doctor is, is and like, man, I mean, bless that guy's heart because that guy is running from patient to patient to patient. But he's not taking a single break. It is that's crazy. A, that's a little scary to me, in my opinion, because, like, here, like, um, I broke my foot kind of, like, uh, early summer last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I went to the emergency room, I'm instantly in. I think I waited maybe 15, 20 minutes. Being, well, I'm not really high priority. It's only a foot. But, like, yeah. I know people that, you know, if anything happens to them, like, I don't know how – I'm assuming this would work like this in Canada, too. Like, I'm, this is extreme. If someone were to get, like, shot, mm-hmm. they'd instantly go into – Of course. Yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. If, like it's, I, if, it's, if it's a life-threatening, they're obviously going to do everything they can to save your life, right? Okay, yeah. I figured that was kind of a dumb question, but, I, like, I kind of <laughs> had to make sure. No, man, it's a good question. Man. It's a good, I mean, I have heard stories – where like people can't breathe, they're having like really bad, like really bad heart problems, but like they still gotta wait in line. That's I've heard those, I've heard those stories too. That's crazy to me. And would like would be a quicker way to get in would be to call. I don't know if it's the same in Canada, but like calling nine one one. Like if you're at home and you have a problem instead of driving to the hospital. Well, I mean, if you call nine one one, they're gonna probably uh, they're gonna say you need an ambulance. If you say yes, they're gonna come and pick you up. And depending on what it is, they might still make you wait, or they might just take you right away, depending on what it is. Wow. Again, it all depends. That's kind of crazy. I'm thinking, like, if you're on an ambulance, I think they're just kind of setting you in already, but that's crazy. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I don't know. I guess that makes sense to wait a little bit, because I know when, uh, for ambulance rides, they're extremely expensive. When Oh, my God. Yeah. I was sent, when I um, had my heart stuff freshman year, which was about four years now. Oh, wow, it's four <laughs> years ago. Crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, I went on a ambulance ride and my school is right next to a hospital it's not even a mile away and the pay for that uh ambulance was two thousand dollars that is crazy to me dude i got a story similar similar to that one actually happened to me in dallas texas what it was is um i was with some friends for uh, over the weekend i was 15 i was at the time i was 15 so just in grade 10 and we were having a pillow fight right in this one room and in the back of the room was this large metal table, but it was just the frame of the table. It was just a metal frame. And it was standing on its side. Like it wasn't standing on four legs, it was standing on its side. And I was standing right in front of it. My friend threw a pillow at me and I ducked and he hit the table behind me. And I didn't see this. So he threw it at me, I ducked. I posture up, I'm, I'm like, haha, you missed, whatever. And then all of a sudden I feel a really sharp pain in my right ankle. I looked down, the table had fell, the table's corner, like the very edge, the metal edge, scraped through my leg, like the back of my ankle, like butter. It was split open, and it was probably, like, it barely grazed my Achilles tendon, like that, that, like, big metal frame. If I was probably about a few millimeters closer, it would have severed my Achilles tendon, and I I wouldn't have been able to walk for probably a year or two. Uh, That's crazy. So... My parents at the time were in Houston, about four hours away. So we had to call them and be like, hey, I'm going to the hospital right now. <laughs> what, what happened? What, what's wrong? So they freaking like, of course, get in the car, drive right back, you know, like see what's going on. But a hospital was probably around, like, uh, of course, we got an ambulance to go to the hospital. It, uh, I would say probably like a five or six minute ride. I don't remember how, like, like how many miles or kilometers away it was. It cost about $3,000. And wow. that is crazy. That is so much money. I mean, like, it's for a hospital ride. And just the way they treat healthcare in America, it really baffles me because America is the only country, like, only first world country in the world that doesn't have free healthcare, which is insane. Yeah, it's a little, it's crazy. But, like, I see, I think our healthcare, I like our healthcare system to an extent. It's just too expensive. They could definitely make it cheaper. It doesn't need to be as costly as it is. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. the only upsides with it, so you, you said your taxes are insanely high. I, I, I'm yeah. wait, So I remember hearing somebody, it's like 50% or something. Like I could be completely wrong, but it's insane. Like, mm-hmm. they're like, you're like, it depends uh, on how much you make per year. Like if you make like, I think over 120,000 Canadian dollars um, every year, then you get taxed. Like, like you're in the highest tax bracket they have. And I'm not sure, like, like numbers, but I think it's like higher than like 40, 40 or 50%. Yeah. It's All like, that um, income is taxed. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to me. And like your gas is insanely high too, right? <laughs> well, right now it's actually pretty cheap, but yeah, normally it's pretty high. Well, you know, like uh, in Canada, we have the imperial system. It's not the, it's sorry, the metric system. In yeah, America, yeah, yeah. It's the imperial system. And so usually 
our gas prices are around one dollar twenty cents per liter. And yeah, it's like so two point something liters. No, three, three point seven liters equals one gallon. So if you take one point uh, twenty and you multiply that by three point seven, you get four dollars and forty four cents Canadian. That's your guess. If you wow. if you convert that to American, uh, I mean I mean to USC, it's probably going to be around five bucks or so per gallon, something like that. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like I see the upsides and the downsides of free healthcare and. I agree with both yeah. sides. I just wish there could be a really good equilibrium, but I think it's <laughs> too greedy with money, especially in this world. It's yeah, I mean, dude, bad. like, it, it is what it is, but, like, every country has their own system. This system works for Canada. It's been where it's been working so far. You know, um, I mean, personally speaking, I would much rather pay higher taxes and have health care just because I've been, I've seen both ends. Like, I used to live in America, I, and now I live, I, I've been in Canada for about seven years, and I can see the difference, but I can also see why somebody wouldn't want to pay taxes and not have health care. I mean, it, both arguments make sense. That's interesting. That's cool. I like, I, I'm glad that you have both standpoints for it because you, su- you have such a good argument now. Like, you see both sides. And yeah. I'm assuming you grew up in the U.S., in Texas? Yeah, so what it was, I was born in Istanbul, Turkey. I don't know if you know where that oh, is. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. My parents are Turkish. Like, I'm fully Turkish as well. And when I was eight years old, my parents decided to move to the States. And so, and so we moved to Chicago we were there for about eight months and then we moved to Indianapolis for five years and then we moved to Dallas, Texas for about a year and a half. That's so cool. Yeah. And we, and we came to Canada in uh, 2012 to Toronto. Well, uh, yeah. what made you guys want to move to Canada? We had some, uh, well, it was just like, we needed like a change of scenery essentially. I guess like, like my dad had like a lot of business. Like he was, uh, he was uh, a big distributor for this Turkish company at the time. And he, and I guess he wanted to like do something different. And he's like, you know what? Like, I don't want to move back to Turkey. And he has some friends here in Toronto. So we decided to move to Toronto. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, and, I definitely want to travel a lot. And I feel like uh, you, I remember talking to you yesterday. You, uh, when I was talking about Spain and Portugal, you mm-hmm. said like you knew Lisbon and stuff like that. I mean, that's oh, just yeah. <laughs> kind of geography. So I'm assuming like, like, have you traveled and stuff too? I, I mean, I've traveled a lot in the States, like with a plane, not so much. But, like, when I was a kid, we'd go on these road trips a lot. And, like, I freaking loved, like, doing those road trips. Like, I've been to New York, New York, Rhode Island, pretty much all of Eastern America. I, I, I haven't ever been west of Texas. But I've been oh. to almost everything on the east side. You know, like, New York, Maine, yeah. Vermont, Virginia, D.C., Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, you name it. Yeah. Illinois. Yeah. That's sick. Uh, I, I would like travel. Travel's a lot. Like, I went so. I'll explain it for this podcast. I mm-hmm. went to Spain and Portugal this summer. And it was a, like, it's beautiful there. And I love all the scenery because everything's super old there. I went, I don't remember the, the city. I want to call it Toledo, but I'm almost positive that's wrong. But it's like, it's, that's the oldest city we went to. And it's mm. the coolest place on earth. I want to go back there so bad. Well, yeah. I mean, Europe is, a, I mean, Europe, they've been around, like they've been building uh, monuments. They've been building buildings there for the longest time, you know, for, for generations and centuries, but America, like North America, it's a pretty new, uh, it's a newly industrial industrialized continent, right? Yeah. So like a lot of, I mean, if you go to any city in Europe, the chances are like, you're going to find some really old historical monuments there. You yeah. Know, so like, that's what like, I like about these other places. And, uh, yeah, I went to Maine this year. Uh, well, technically last year in October too, I went to Mount Washington, I think it is. Mm-hmm. The wind speeds up there. I don't know when, if when you went to Maine, where you went, but if you went to Mount Washington, it's an insane. It's like about a mile, mountain that's probably like I think they said almost a mile tall, so about five thousand oh, wow. two hundred and eighty feet. I think that's what a mile is. So it was, and the wind speeds up there are crazy. When we went up there, I think it was seventy, eighty miles an hour. Jesus, and that's not high for them. How do you They're, stand in that wind? Like, it, like it, it would like blow you away. I gotta. I, I'll show you a video after this. I have videos of me with my coat. I'd open it and basically like, you know what a flying squirrel looks like. I yeah. kind of basically mimic that structure of it and jump. And it would push me back a couple feet. It was the coolest thing. Their highest recorded winds was 230 something. I'm going to say Damn. insanely high. Their buildings are actually chained down. So they have <laughs> like these thick chains going completely around the buildings, like bolted onto the ground. Wow. It's that is crazy. I think like, I, I, I once saw a video on YouTube of like the, of like the windiest place on earth. I forget where it was. I, I think it was in Antarctica or something like that. And 
Like, the guy could not even stand in the wind. Like, it's, like, blowing, like, and the guy's falling over. I think it was, like, also or, or like, around, like, 200 miles an hour, which is, that's, dude, that's, that's crazy. Like, you cannot live there in that, in that, in that, like, in that wind. Not like, at all. Like, that's just unbearable. Like, Toronto is, like, Toronto is a very windy city just because, like, there aren't many mountains around. It's flat lands. And it gets really windy here sometimes, too. But that 218 mile, I mean, 200 miles, that is, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's absolutely insane. So I want to talk about wrestling because mm-hmm. I remember you said you wrestled yes. and I brought up jujitsu and they're pretty similar, but you yeah. did wrestling in high school and in college. I actually did wrestling in middle school and college, not high school because oh, wow. my high school, I went to four different high schools. Cause I, you know, like, I mean, one in Turkey, one in America, and then one in Canada, none of them had wrestling teams. So I couldn't wrestle there. Huh. Yeah. But then, but then when I started going to university here in Canada, there, there was a wrestling team here. And I joined it, of course. So in total, I, will, I, I wrestled for about eight years in total. And man, it's, it's an awesome sport. Like it's, it is grueling to the max. It is crazy hard, but it is so rewarding. Like just, I mean, you know, like you're a grappler as well. There's just something very empowering about being able to do, like do certain moves like in wrestling or in jujitsu. Yeah, it's when just you so hit- empowering, yeah. When you hit such a clean move and it goes like perfect, which it doesn't happen often, but when it does, <laughs> it's just the best feeling ever. And I'm missing it so much right now with this whole quarantine thing. Everything shut down. I mean, I've taken I've taken some jits classes as well, some uh, some jiu jitsu classes, and you know, I mean, I'm a wrestler, right? So like, my goal, like as as a wrestler, is to take the guy on his back and pin him there with everything I have, you know. And like like I'm also a heavyweight wrestler. I'm like I'm a big guy. So I was, I was rolling with this brown belt and I'm a white belt. And this guy is probably like 130, 120 pounds, right? Super light guy. And I, and he, and he, of course he lets me, he lets me take position. I pin the guy with my chest, like chest to chest on his back. And like, keep in mind, I keep guys my size down on their backs like that. This guy just rolls out. I'm like, how the fuck did you do that, man? <laughs> like what? That's Jesus. Me. It's the best thing. Cause I, I'm not necessarily a big dude. I'm 5'10 and 155 <laughs> pounds ish. So in Jiu Jitsu class, I'm one of the smallest guys there. And my coach, he's 100, not 100, 240 pounds, 6'2. Oh, wow. That's so a big like, guy. Yeah, he, he's a big dude. He's a little like uh, fatter, but like he's also built. Like he has a lot of muscle on him. Like mm-hmm. I've seen him lift. The dude's a monster. <laughs> like going against him like obviously i have no chance because he's like a third degree black belt at this point oh, wow. and i'm a white belt and mm-hmm. like but the positions like he gets me and i kind of get out of some because he's also he's not used to going people my size but mm-hmm. there's um you know what guard is yes yes so in that i'll do a, a move to get out of that and no one is ever flexible enough to get out of that because like i'm super flexible i can do a split and everything mm-hmm. i can like almost wiggle my body under him a little bit and press my way out, but he always goes against big dudes and never, <laughs> and they can never do it because they're so big. Like my coach can barely get their legs around him. So once he gets his leg, they're kind of locked in there. Man, when I did my coach, he just kind of looked at me like, "What just happened?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> do you guys do uh? Do you guys do gi or no gi? Uh, both. Both. Yeah, I like them both. I like gi a lot more. It's mm-hmm. almost more practical to me because gi can almost just re- uh, re- resemble clothing. Some people don't agree yeah. with that, but. I basically can do whatever I do with a gi with you with regular clothing, unless Mm -hmm. you don't have long sleeve, which I mean, in the summer time, you really wouldn't, but practically everything else applies. Yeah. Well, the principle behind the gi is to, is to use technique and like not power or explosiveness, right. Or speed. It pretty much negates, you know, it it negates speed and explosiveness. If you have a gi on. Yes. So you got to rely on technique. Do you know actually how, um, I forget which Gracie it was. I forget, I forget, I forget if it was, I think it was Helio Gracie's son. He was the one who actually brought jiu-jitsu to America. It was either Carlo, Carlos or Helio, Helio Gracie's son. And he's the one who actually brought it to America and like made it like a big sport in the States as well. And yeah. I believe, he, I believe he, he had this condition where he couldn't run. Like he couldn't get a heart rate, like, like a high heart rate because of his heart condition. So he developed wearing a gi and and modern day jiu-jitsu as we know it's if i'm not if i'm correct about this i've i got a fact check on this but yeah yeah i've heard i've never heard the full story and that sounds right from things i've heard i didn't know about the heart condition that's really cool to me like Mm -hmm. 
I don't ever hear about people like modern day, mm-hmm. like changing technique on things like that. He completely transformed jujitsu yeah, as a whole, man. like because of his heart condition. And like, I doubt that guy ever thought he'd have this big of an impact on that sport. Huh. Like, it's just crazy. Imagine him being here today, be like, everyone practice it. Man, I mean, imagine did. him, imagine him seeing his lineage, you know, seeing how many black belts came out from, from the students he taught. Yeah, that's my, um, my coach is, I can't remember. He, he, uh, trained the sport under someone that worked under a Gracie. Mm-hmm. Insane. And so my coach is insanely wow. good at this sport. And like my coach has always been a pretty big guy. So he's never been super fast. So he does like the same thing as um the Gracie. Um, oh, what was the guy's name again that brought it? I, think, uh, I, I, I forget I, what his son's name was. It was, I know, I know it's Carlos and Gila Gracie are the, are, are the two like main founders. I forget his son's name though. I, I, I yeah, don't remember. The son who brought it over. Like my coach basically does it the same exact way. Like he's super slow with it. He's like, he'll do like certain quick things because you have to, but he's mm-hmm. never power. Like the dude's a big dude. But he never exerts a lot of strength. He doesn't have to. I mean, sometimes he'll do it for fun, but like <laughs> other than that, he doesn't need to. He just always, he's super good with technique. And his son's like that. His son's about 180 and six, one or two. He's actually in Bellator. He's insane jiu-jitsu. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow. he's, he's won three pro fights, one of them in like 17 seconds. Wow. Yeah. You watch, you watch MMA at all? I, I, I want to say yes, but I don't. I wish <laughs> I watched it more. I'm just, I'm not a big TV guy, like, like cable TV and stuff. I always just watch mm-hmm. stuff on like Netflix. So if it's yeah. not on Netflix, I don't really watch it. I mean, I got Hulu now, which has like uh, Hulu Live and stuff, so I can probably get it on there. But I want to definitely start following MMA and stuff like that because it's such an interesting sport to uh, watch. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, the guy's name was uh, Horian Gracie. Horian Gracie. Okay. Or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Rory, it's, it's spelled Rory in, but like, you know, like uh, in Portuguese, in, in Portuguese, the, uh, the R is like an H. Yeah. So Hori, Horian or Hor, Horian, whatever his name is. Yeah. He was That's... a ninth degree red belt in, in BJJ. Man. Wow. <laughs> That's that guy's incredible. incredible. I wonder if people like ath like jujitsu athletes now are better mm-hmm. or worse than jujitsu athletes early 1900s like they were because like I just know the like, conditioning for people and like how people are now are mm-hmm. a lot stronger and stuff. I, I'm always positive. Like I know like how people have grown and like all the new health science out there. We're just generally better at this time mm-hmm. um, history yeah. or 100 years ago. So I wonder what the difference is. I wonder if they're better then or now. Well, I'm not sure about like, uh, I'm not sure how the rules of, of jiu-jitsu, like if they've changed or not, like in tournaments, like what counts as points or, you know, if anything has changed in tournaments. But if I had to guess, um, I would say they're better simply because of this reason, because they've had more time to really learn from all kinds of different instructors. Okay. But I guess, I guess we can never really know for sure. I mean, you always ask a question, like it's any sport, right? For example, who's better? Uh, Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan or LeBron James and you know, Kobe Bryant and people like that. But like, you can never know because they didn't play against each other in their primes. Yeah, that's that kind of true. Stuff. Cause like, I want, I like, I think of it this way. Cause like with like wrestling and MMA, mm-hmm. there's no, I'm trying like, I'll compare it like this way with baseball the records of baseball a hundred years ago, are insane because of the types of like uh, equipment they use. Exactly. Yeah. And like their uh, like battery, I don't know if it's battery average and stuff like that. Their home runs like were super high and stuff. But now it can't be like that because everything that changed and the rules have changed. But like with MMA and stuff, you don't have equipment. You just have your body and knowledge, really. Yeah. So it's I feel like it's a harder thing to compare. And I just really want to know and like figure like find a way to compare because I think it'd be such an interesting thing to like look into yeah there was a guy actually well uh, speaking of wrestling like and like wrestling rules actually changed i believe after the 2012 olympics or before it because they wanted to actually remove wrestling from the from the olympics because they deemed it a too a sport that was too boring to watch and like if you don't know wrestling you won't you won't understand what's going on which is true so they actually changed the rules and adapted it so if you don't know wrestling you will have an idea of what's going on there was a guy um this, this Russian guy named Alex uh, Alexander Carolyn, heavyweight wrestler. And 
man, it's crazy. This guy is, in my opinion, the greatest, like, may, like maybe the greatest wrestler of all time. Like, at, le- at least Greco-Roman-wise. 887 wins and two losses. Oh. Which were both, both his losses were by one point. That's insane. Like, that is incredible. Oh. So it's, yeah. How do you, wow. Imagine the confidence yeah. on that guy. Yeah, imagine like he walks, the, he, like like he walks to the mat, right? He's like he's his opponent. He's like, he looks at him like he's dinner. Doesn't even think twice about it. He's like, oh, oh, dude, you're no problem. That's crazy. Like for me, if I were to win that much, I think I'd be even more nervous. Cause like, I mean, say I don't know how many won in a row, but obviously mm-hmm. it's probably one up to eighty in a row at one point. Imagine winning eighty to hundred matches in a row. I'd be so nervous. I'm like I have to win. Like I I can't lose yeah. because you've won so many. It's been I missed embarrassing, I guess. I don't know. That's how I crazy. think of it. Dude, he went for six years without giving up a single points. And in wrestling, I mean points points fly all the time. Yeah, wrestling, like, like jiu-jitsu does the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, how like he was perfect for six years. Whoa. That is insane. See, that's nuts. You know, I mean, yes, and I'm sure like um what's his name? Um there was one of the Gracies alive today. He uh he had a video where he was rolling with a, with a white belt and the white belt was talking trash to a, to a Gracie who was like 62. Uh, I think, I think he was like a, he was like a ninth degree red, red Dan black belt or something like that. Wow. Yeah. And the guy, no one's ever passed his guard ever. And he's 62. No like, one's this Gracie, ever. Yeah. Ever passed his guard. That is. There's no way yeah, that can be true. I wonder too, but well, uh, who was that guy? Wait, wait, okay, wait, okay, wait one second. I'm gonna look it up right now. Uh, he, uh, he's a son, you know, like he's in the Gracie family, so he's obviously known a lot of. Uh, he's obviously been around the sport for a long, long time. I mean, m- maybe that was like you know, like professionally, no one's passes, you know, no one's passed his uh, guard or whatever. But like, yeah, as a kid, someone wants to pass your guard. Yeah, yeah, kid wise, but like even having your black belt and going to your. Well, I, I don't know the whole ring. You said red, uh, uh what? Red, be- red belt is given to like only like very few people yeah. have, uh, have, have red belts. Like, you have to start from people. like the time you can walk until the time you die. Because like, I, yeah. I remember looking at the scaling. It's like, once you have like your black belt to get your next degree, it's like six years and it's like six, six years. And then like nine, not like eight years, eight years, eight years. And it's insane. Mm-hmm. I think it goes all the way up to like, to get your ranking, it's like 15 years and then another 15 years. I'm like, how do people live this long in jiu I know, I know, right, man? And like, yeah, that, that guy who actually, uh, who actually had the rebel that I was talking about is um, uh, Helson Gracie. Yeah, and you know, I mean, he's been in jiu for a long, long time, right? And the earliest age you can get a red belt uh, is 67. And oh, wow. 62? Oh, I guess, yeah. You know what? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't yeah. make sense then. Yeah, there you go. Something, something doesn't add up here. Maybe it was different, like, back then compared to now. So maybe that's something different we can compare it with, like, how we are saying how if today's jiu-jitsu and, like, MMA is better than, like, olden jiu-jitsu and mm-hmm. MMA. Like, obviously, the rules had to change for the belt for him to have it at 62 and then not yeah, at 67. Maybe. Well, they're going out by this, right? Like, they're saying if you, if, you get, if you get your black belts at age 18, then the earliest you can get your, uh, red, your red belt is 67. That's, that's what they're going by. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, okay. Maybe that doesn't apply to him because yeah. he, maybe he got crazy. his black 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 when he was like thirteen or whatever. You know, like and yeah. well, how I know how it works in my dojo. I don't know how belt ranking fully works. To get a blue belt, you have to be at least sixteen, and then the rest of belts are full like free range. I see. Okay. So for him to get a black belt, and it basically takes it like the earliest to get a black belt is like ten years, but you also have to be at least sixteen to get your blue belt. But I don't know how that works. Say like. With, like, a Gracie, say, imagine him doing jiu-jitsu from the time he was, like, three or four, basically be on a walk and actually function mm-hmm. correctly. By the time I believe he's... it's 18, yeah. Like, 18 is the earliest age you can get your black belts. But by the time he's yeah. 16, he's definitely, out, like, because it goes white, blue, purple, brown, black. He's yeah. definitely purple territory, pushing brown belt training for the last, four, uh, like, 13, <laughs> 12, like, 12, 13 years. Like, he's obviously around that area. Do they have to give him the blue belt, or can they bump him right up to, to purple or brown? Because I don't know how that works. I mean, you. I mean, you probably know about like like more more, more about this than I do. But as far as I know, you gotta get your belts in in sequence. You can't just like skip belts, right? Yeah, I don't think you could. But like, I don't know. 
I guess, I mean, I guess you could technically if your instructor just kind of gave you one, mm-hmm. but I mean, someone like, like, I'm just going to use Gracie as an, uh, an example. Obviously, he did it since a very young age, and by the time he's 16, he's probably done it for the last 12 years. He's mm-hmm. definitely above a blue belt territory, and if you were to fight yeah, competitions, sure. blue yeah. belt, it'd be like sandbagging, and I, they have that mm-hmm. in wrestling, so you know what that means, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and well, for people that don't know, sandbagging is say I'm a white belt, but technically I should probably be a blue or maybe even purple. But I stay white belt for like four or five years mm-hmm. just so I can crush people. That's what sandbagging is <laughs> for people that don't know. That's terrible, man. It's actually like a dirty move a little bit, but you know, it depends on yeah. your instructor as well. Yeah, it's just I don't agree with it. I, I remember the worst, I never had sandbagging in a competition, I don't think at least. Um, but well, with these tournaments called Good Fights, they're smaller tournaments, so the brackets for age brackets are way bigger. When I move to adult, it's 16 to 29. Oh, and it's that is, ooh. My second tournament I did, I did better. I did better than my uh, first tournament, which was good. But uh, I think I beat uh, – I know I beat the first guy pretty quick because the kid was like, like 19 or 20, so he wasn't too much older than me. Well, I guess he was four years older than me at the time, three or four. And then I went against this 28-year-old. And how it works, you have an eight-minute match, I think it is, eight or ten minutes, and you don't have no points. It's completely sub, sub only in okay. the fights, which I love. I like the sub only. And uh, so you do the eight, ten minutes, and we went through that, and we no one tapped each other. And by that, you're kind of gassed. Eight, ten minutes full mm-hmm. wrestling is a lot. That is, yeah. For, and, anyone, uh, for, for anyone who hasn't ever, like, grabbed it before, eight minutes, uh, like, rolling is – it will absolutely wreck you. Yeah, I think the hardest part about it is – you're breathing because you don't think about it. And when you're trying to exert strength and you're doing something like, you know, pushing or pulling something really hard, you don't breathe. It's like when you're lifting or you don't breathe when you're trying to lift something really hard because heavy, because you act, you're like stronger a little bit, or I don't know, your body is like doing it. So that's what my biggest fault with jujitsu is when I do it. I don't breathe correctly at times mm-hmm. because then you get gas. So then you go to overtime, which you have to escape. And like, so one person escaping, one person's tapping for each position. So you have an arm bar, Basically, almost already locked in. A triangle, basically, almost locked in. Mm-hmm. And back control. And I think that's it. There might be another one. But, and if you go through all of them, you go through it again. And I did, I went through two of them. And I'm really mad at myself. I basically gave up on like the last one because I was completely dead. Uh-huh. And I was like, almost like, like I gag a lot in tournaments because I get super winded mm-hmm. and I get nervous. And I was at that point. And I'm almost mad at myself because I know. I could have pushed more. I think it's just one of those things like you kind of give up in the moment. And then like when you're done, you're like, I definitely could have done more. And you're like kind of mad at yourself. That's what I did. Absolutely. Yeah. I do. It's like the worst thing is when you know, you could have done better. Yeah. But, but you didn't like, that is the worst. Like, it's it, like, it, it just haunts you. A hundred percent. Terrible. And I remember like, I remember my, my first wrestling match back uh, in, in university and me and my teammates had had McDonald's the day before. Yeah, my first r- uh, wrestling match in university. And I go out, and I, I, start, I, start, I start wrestling the guy. Within a minute, I guess. I am just dead tired within a minute. It's a six-minute match. And oh. I am dead tired within the first minute. And, of course, the guy ended up pinning me. And it, it stung so much that I started to do cardio every morning before school. It's because <laughs> I didn't want to ever have that happen again. And and I never guessed out in, like in a match again. Hey, at least it gave yeah. you good motivation. You didn't take it and pout. You did something about it. It's better than a lot. That, man. You can't pout about that. Yeah. yeah. You gotta you gotta get back up, right? Yeah. You recognize your mistake and you move forward, which is great. Oh yeah. And a good thing to have. A lot of people don't have that ability. Everyone like kind of thinks when something goes wrong, it's not always their fault, and it's like the world's mm-hmm. against them. But now, like, like you did something about it, which is great. Good thing to have. Yeah, dude. That's why, like, um, in the future. Like when I like in the future, I mean, I don't know when I'll have kids. Like I, I, I'm guessing it's, it's like a long time from now. But like when I do, I'm gonna absolutely send them to like martial arts, just because it develops so much character. It oh yeah. It teaches you so much about life, about what you need to know, about learning, and then about teaching. You learn, you become a different person. Yeah, there's so much discipline in that, and yeah. like martial arts, is such a good self defense thing to have. I think mm-hmm. self defense is one of the number one skills anyone in the world should know anymore it should be taught in schools in my opinion because i completely agree absolutely you just hear about all these people of like like rape victims in um uh mug like i, I don't know what other words but i'm just saying muggings but mm-hmm. like stuff like that and if people are more educated on how to like defend themselves like obviously like, you're like held at gunpoint or something just give them your money it's not worth your mm-hmm. life just give them whatever they wanted but like with certain things a lot of people could get out of it it's just they don't know any information like they don't have any knowledge how to get out like obviously if i were to get attacked or something 
I get to hold my ground a little bit, like a lot better than an average person. I'm saying, absolutely, I'm, yeah. If, like, you know, some six five dude that was almost 300 pound jack, like, came after me, I'm probably screwed. I'm not going to get away from it. But I'm just, I'm saying, like, I think self defense should be just something that should be taught to everyone because it's like it, the world's bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're not going to fix that. I wish we could. And if you could fix people, it'd be the best thing ever. But I don't really think anyone <laughs> can. So you got to kind of like take matters in your own hands and. I absolutely agree, man. Like it should be taught in schools. You know, like people should know how to defend themselves instead of because nowadays they're they're being taught how to snitch. Like, if you tell on them, you're gonna get rewarded for it. It's like no, you should be able to handle some situations yourself. You don't have to like go and tell every like tell teachers to to help you do or, or tell your parents to help you do it. Handle situations yourself. That's something. That's something I feel every kid can learn. Yeah, I think I feel like a lot of people are being taught to rely on someone else to fix something mm-hmm. or, and it's such a bad thing and man, it's terrible like i'm 17 like i i'm gonna be honest i'm kind of spoiled and stuff at home but <laughs> i don't try to act like i'm kind of embarrassed by it. i'm just lucky that i have a pretty good family and they're able to like you know kind of give me a lot of things that a lot of people can't but i also i don't know where i was gonna go with that um you're very grateful that's what yeah you're i'm just like yeah. really grateful with that and some I don't know what I was going with that fully, to be honest. <laughs> all right. Um, so I want to change this whole topic. No problem, man. It's all good. The whole topic. I'm going to go to your TikTok. Yes. So you've amassed about almost 500,000? I believe it was 478,000 as of like uh, this morning. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. That's a, that's a lot. Dude, it, it is nothing compared to you. I mean, come on. Stop being okay. so humble. No, no, no. Like, okay. <laughs> I do have 2.5 million. And it's not, I'm not trying to belittle you because like, 500,000 is still a lot if you think about it because um, I don't know how Canada works with counties and stuff, but you obviously live in the U.S., so you know how counties work. Mm-hmm. But yes. like, our states are broken up in counties. Like 500,000 is almost triple my county in New Jersey. and there's, a lot of people, man. Yeah, yeah like 500,000 is insane. When I first had 250,000, um, I was like, yeah, it's cool. And everyone, some people at school are like, no, that, that's, that's a lot. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, not really. They're like, dude, look up the county in New Jersey uh, of – uh, your county our county and I was like okay I'm like oh maybe it's a little bit more than I thought and like so 500,000 is insane and it's how insane, long did that man. take yeah. it took about six months yeah it's almost been six months now yeah um I mean compared to some people I've been going slowly but compared to others it's been pretty fast you know like, so, that's yeah, actually I mean, pretty yeah. quick it is I got uh, lucky <laughs> but that's in, like 500,000 in six months is a lot well, what happened with you is you had like a very unique uh, niche. Like I haven't seen anyone make videos like yours, you know, like Dirty Jokes with Their Mother. And it just caught on really well. And it's, it's hilarious. Like, and I think so, uh, something that actually makes your videos very unique is your dad laughing at every single one. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I was going through yours because I never actually seen really any of your videos before. Mm-hmm. And when you hit me up, I started going through your videos. And like the story is actually really, really cool. I uh I'm trying to remember the full story on this one. I it was listen. It was little boy. It was about oh the uh, little boy. I think he's letting his dog or something. It was one of your newer ones. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one yeah. actually freaks me out. That one's crazy, man. I mean, like, and these things are you know like they're true stories. I actually heard about a lot of them. I've you know I mean I mean they're true in the sense I I've heard about them or or read about them, but it's entertaining and people like to watch it. I mean, yeah. I find it entertaining to watch that kind of stuff myself. Yeah, I, I went through and binged them the other day, and I think they're like crazy. <laughs> they're really cool, and well, and pretty scary. Like that, uh, the boy one kind of reminds me of something like, um, like this story I heard. I don't know if you post anything about it, but it was um, and if you haven't, you can kind of use it and look this story up to get a better <laughs> version of it. This uh kid, I don't know if it was a boy or girl, it was, like real younger, probably like ten, and has one of those like little air vents on his wall. Mm-hmm. And every night, like, not every night, but every now and then, he'd, like, see eyes in it. And he'd be, like, real freaked out. And his parents just thought he was crazy. And this happened for, like, months and months and months. And his kid would, like, freak Jesus. out all the time. And he's like, I, I swear, I see something. I see something. Or I hear something. Like, he's, like, swore. And the parents like, no, 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 no. And, like, one day, they just, like, started smelling this horrible smell in his room. And they eventually went inside the vent. And they found this dead, like, dead body in there. Oh, my God. So it was alive before. Yeah, this person was in there. Oh my god, it's it's scary, like stuff like that. Like and like I've I've heard a bunch of stories about like people breaking in houses and actually like living in someone's houses for like yeah. months. Oh my god, yeah, they live in the attic, right? Just like live in the attic and yeah, and come come out and like eat their food when they're gone. 
Yeah, I, I heard one. I don't know how true this is, but like I've like heard it several times. Where like this family lives in like like a almost like a mansion, and there's like this clown statue, and mm-hmm. after a while, like dad realized like they don't have a clown statue. It was an actual person. Oh my god! Because like he realized it was not their statue because it would move from room to room. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> Like, I don't know how you don't, like, that's why I don't think it's true sometimes, because, like, how do you not, like, realize yeah, that? Yeah, how do you, how do you not realize, oh, okay, okay, so just, uh, t- today's in the kitchen, yesterday was in the living room. How did it get there? I wonder. Did you move there? No. Did you move there? No. Oh, well, you know, it just got there. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, yeah, and then, like, but then, but, like, I don't think that's how it works. I think it stayed in one spot for a while, mm-hmm. and, and, like, then he started, like, toying with him but like <laughs> i don't know how you don't realize you don't have a clown statue instantly or like maybe since you're living in such a big house and like you know buying a house like that some people already have stuff like that in their house maybe mm-hmm. you just didn't know but i don't know like that's just crazy to me <laughs> what do you think is your like creepiest story you said my creepy story that, uh, I, like, that, that, like that's happened to me or like one that i've heard uh whatever one like whatever the creepiest story you can think of heard happened to you you posted whatever I mean, you're putting me on the spot here, but I, I got one actually. Yeah. Um, so remember, um, this is actually a story, uh, I read about, I saw on YouTube actually, and it, it scared me so much. I was like, wow, that is so weird. I actually watched, uh, it's a guy named Mr. Nightmare. And like, he tells these weird stories. And one of the stories there was this in this guy was working out at the gym. And as he's working out, someone interrupts him during his set. And he's like, Hey, you know, and, and he starts talking to him. And for some reason, the first guy ends up giving this this random guy his Snapchats, right, to stay in touch, which is, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know why you'd do that. Just like, it, I mean, if it was awkward, but I guess, I guess they had 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 that rapport that he gave him a Snapchat. So that night, that guy goes home, and and the guy from the gym messages him, "What are you doing? What are you up to?" And he's like, "Why are you messaging me? You know, it's just so random." And he and he doesn't respond. And and he messages and he messages him again, and again the guy and, and again the guy doesn't respond. And he blocks him. A few minutes later, he gets a notification on Snapchat saying this guy added you, and it's a, and it's a different account, same person from the gym. He adds him and he sends him a photo from his phone, like a screenshot. And th- this was when the Snapchat Maps first came out. So remember, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, Snapchat Maps. Yeah. Yeah, th- it was when it first came out, and it showed. Uh, like the photo showed where the guy was living. Ooh. Yeah. And the guy was right outside his house. That's so crazy. he apparently tried to come in. The guy at the gym was uh, like, like the guy, like the initial guy was apparently like a really strong person and he knocked him out and called the police and, and he got arrested. But dude, like that is a very scary situation to be in. Yeah. That's, that's, that's freaky. Yeah. Which that is why, if you have Snapchat, honestly, like if you have anyone there other than close friends, turn off the app, turn off the off the maps thing. Do, don't don't show yourself as visible. Oh yeah, no, I've always it's a mistake when you happen. Yeah, I don't trust that. Like, it's such a dumb. Th- like, I I kind of like it for like safety reasons with friends. I don't know if you can pick certain people that can see. I never really toy with it. I just have it on Ghost or whatever, so they can't see mm-hmm. you. I just I I don't like that that random people because I, I have a bunch of people yeah. in my Snapchat now. And I don't like them yeah. where I can be. And some I'm, of them, some of them, you aren't like you are that close with. Yeah, well. it's just it's just freaky, like stuff like that. I just don't think it should be a thing. And I remember there was a lot of controversy when it first came out, and they they kept it up. It kind of surprised me. But <laughs> it's um, dying though, man. Like Snapchat, I feel like is dying. Especially since Instagram stories came out. Yeah, yeah everyone's on that now. I like Snap. Because it's, I don't know, it's just, I think it's more convenient because I can just kind of talk to you. Because Instagram, it's more just, you know, posting your life, posting events and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> Snapchat, I think, is way more almost of a tech. It's like Kick. I don't know if you remember Kick. I remember Kick. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like Major that. Major throwback. <laughs> yeah. That's easy. Like, that's, that's still kind of pushing for me. I barely had Kick. But <laughs> I think Snapchat's more of like a Kick based type of social media, mm-hmm. but like with a lot more things you could do with it, obviously. But because like now uh, Snapchat has those like shows like TV based. Yeah, yeah. I do. love that. Like I go on it all the time and I'll watch it <laughs> for hours on it. So and that was yeah. Smart Snapchat's it, Snapchat's innovating really well. Like they're staying in the game. They're not like they're not losing any traction. No, like, they're they're trying to innovate, which is which is awesome. You know, uh, it's that's great because yeah, they're definitely they're staying do- afloat. doing good. 
I, I, the Instagram TV. So I don't, I like it. Mm-hmm. It's just, I think they could basically make another YouTube. Yeah. If they were to make it different, they shouldn't definitely make like, you know how you have like your home search, your notifications, um, like uh, your profile page. They mm-hmm. definitely should make it like an extra page for all your, like all videos. It because mm-hmm. there's really no way to get the videos that much, and sometimes they'll show up the top of your screen, right? Or you'll get them on your feed every now and then. But other than that, like you don't really see them. I feel like they could almost make a whole another YouTube if they were make another tab for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they absolutely should, and I, I believe that's coming soon. And you know, like, like, like we'll see, we'll see when that is. Uh, but yeah, I feel like in next like few months, I feel like we're gonna see a lot of dip changes in uh, social media, the way everything goes with TikTok emerging and everything like that. And Facebook is, I mean, do you have Facebook? Yeah, I do have Facebook. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like, know the last time I've touched <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, you're, for example, like people who are in high school now or going to university, a lot of them don't have Facebook. They mm-hmm. have Instagram, they have Snapchat, they have TikTok. And you know, like it's like the world is changing. It just changes, changes uh, it's the way it works. Things change, right? Yeah, and Facebook, I, they do some things good. I just don't think they've innovated enough at all. Mm-hmm. Like well, Facebook, Facebook uh, they they actually well they were innovative for so long, and now that they're starting to lose a bit of traction, it's different now because I mean Messenger was uh, is uh, still to this day is a very good way to communicate with people, right? And Facebook ads when that came out, it, it involved it, it launched like an entire new business model with Facebook ads. Like drop shipping, especially you can people. A lot of people run Facebook ads to drop ship. People can like local, uh, promote their local businesses there. They can sell merch. They can do a lot of things. Yeah. So I mean, so they did do like a bunch of good things. But, like I, f- I feel like it just pertains so much to like older people. And, like my parents mm-hmm. that weren't yeah. even, like into social media, they all use it. And all like my parents' friends <laughs> use it. Like I don't see many like younger people on it. Which at the same time it's still super huge. Like, as I say, it's dying. Maybe it's because I just don't see people my age on it as much. Mm-hmm. It's still super, super huge. Like YouTube videos, yeah. like people that have videos on there, they blow up. <laughs> Cause, uh, now, did I say YouTube? I mean, Facebook, um, Facebook videos and stuff like that get insane amount of views. Like I know a bunch of popular YouTubers have a bunch of videos on there, like hundred plus million views, but that's because there's almost, I, well, before it was almost 3 billion people on that, uh, <laughs> this, uh, app. But yeah. I mean, it could be more now, but that's like a lot of people. That's almost half of the world. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, also like you got to look at uh, how it is uh, overseas as well. I mean, like we live in North America, but overseas, uh, some countries get their news. I mean, like some countries get so much news from Facebook because it's just been integrated so well into their mobile carrier that like their mobile carrier promotes having a Facebook, like a social media package with your phone with your device and it's it's, it's like integrated into, into the society there i never knew about that like that's how I, I get all my news from like facebook social media and this is like really bad i get a <laughs> lot of my news from meme pages oh god yeah <laughs> and it's like i don't oh, I, trap. I take it with a grain of salt like i don't take it full truth or whatever they say but mm-hmm. i get the gist of like stuff and especially when like famous people die i get it from mm-hmm. world star on instagram and like instantly yeah. And that's always how I figure out. And I, I basically know it's real by them because I've looked it up always mm-hmm. after I see Worldstar post. But Worldstar usually posts like a lot of truthful stuff and stuff like that. And it's just <laughs> crazy to me that that's how I'm getting my information. And it's not really new to me because I'm only 17. So I've always been really around it for the last nine years. So not mm-hmm. really a time I don't remember. But it's just, it just still baffles my mind thing because like I know how it's my crazy, parents. crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, like I remember 15, uh, not 15 years ago. I don't remember anything that then, but I remember my parents reading the newspaper. I mean, I'm only 17. <laughs> so it's, history. And like, my, I'm only 17. I remember that. So it's just like, that's crazy how much stuff has evolved in such a short time. Dude, I mean, like just uh, the internet, right? The internet's like, what was it like? It like made in the nineties. Yeah. So what happened, how it worked was, uh, whenever there's an IT class, I'm trying to remember it fully more, um, uh, the World Wide web was created super late 90s and then it just kind of blew up from there because then you had email and stuff like that and you could actually post stuff on there mm-hmm. you have all these websites so I, yeah i'm pretty sure that's how it worked like late 90s worldwide web came out and then it just took off from there 
Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's crazy because the iPhone came out in 2008. That was 12 years ago. 12 years ago, there like the iPhone first came out. People still, pe- people still use landline. I mean, nowadays everybody has a laptop or a phone or of some kind. I mean, imagine living life without internet today. It'd be crazy. It'd, it'd be close to impossible. Yeah, like I mean, I don't. I, I uh, yeah, I don't. I'm trying to think. I, I mean, I play my Xbox all the time. <laughs> all the time, right? There, there, there you go. Yeah. No, like, I mean, I'm sure you also had some friends who were just like not on social media at all. I mean, I had those friends who were just like not on social media. But nowadays, if you're not on social media, it's like, okay, what's the problem here? Like, why don't you have social media? Yeah. You're like, what are you hiding? That's what like, it comes down to because you have to have it now. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then, uh, oh, I had a I had a thought and I lost I lost it. I'm trying to like um like even anything like um internet with I'm trying I'm gonna say like doctors offices. There's no papers there anymore. Like that's and that's kind of crazy to me thinking they don't keep like i'm sure they keep some kind of physical record for some stuff but not as much as before like before like obviously it had to be all files but they don't really do that as much now because you know it's all in computers but my thought is like i mean anything can happen you can lose all that like some 15 year old kid hacked nasa before i your that doctor's office can't be that hard to get into yeah man i mean i, I mean you know how mark zuckerberg you know like you know what he did when he was in uh, at Harvard? He uh, he uploaded photos of people onto the school server, which was <laughs> onto the Harvard school server. He uploaded the photos, and he was apparently drunk when he did it. <laughs> so it just shows you, it's like okay, like coding is simple. This guy can figure it out. You know, like it's, it's it's not a problem. No, that reminds me of um Bill Gates. So Bill Gates did something kind of similar. He didn't like school, but he liked coding and stuff like that. And was super good at it, but he hated school. Mm-hmm. And he like, I don't know if he failed out of Harvard or dropped out. But he dropped out as far as I know, yeah. That's what he was dropped out, okay. And uh, so what he used to do is he used to hack into the school system. Also, this was, you know, forever ago because he's a little <laughs> older. He used to hack into the school system and change his classes which and put him in classes with girls. <laughs> like he'd switch stuff around so it'd be him and it so many girls. Which oh, is, my like, God. That's insane. You see Bill Gates, he looks like this little nerd, but like – Man was balling in uh, college. That's hilarious, man. That is so funny. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, I think that's great. And it's such a good story. But, like, I, back then, I'm sure stuff like that was so much easier to, like, hack through. Because yeah, of course. They didn't even have I imagine so. internet when he was in college. <laughs> I mean, I imagine today is, like, it's a lot harder to hack into systems today. But then again, the hackers are also better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything is, everything, again, again, everything is evolving, right? Everything from the hackers to the hacking to the, to the dependence is, is evolving. Yeah, and like, I don't know shit about hacking, but, you know, I, I, that's what I do know. I know a basic amount of it because in IT, so I, I go to a technical school, so I learned mm-hmm. IT business, which is insanely fun. And so in IT this year, we're learning cybersecurity. And well, we kind of were. Now I don't know what's going on with school. I'm barely learn, learning anything. <laughs> but um, I learned a lot of basic stuff. And if I took it because IT is not that interesting anymore. It, like, I don't know if the, like, the class just bored me, but if I took it more serious, I could know a pretty good amount about hacking and how to get through stuff because we're talking about all this stuff that's not difficult to do and all you need is a few basic softwares and a little bit of coding knowledge and you could get into a lot of serious things yeah dude do you know what you want to do for college i mean like i know you're gonna go to like uh, college soon right yeah yeah i'm going to college in like six months wow nice that's crazy i'm gonna be an adult in four months <laughs> um you- you get any like any acceptance letters yet from anybody or like i'm just going to a community college okay that's it, cool it's too, well man. it's it yeah. will so how it works is i have a community college but it got partnered with this like really nice college that's close to my mm-hmm. house and so the college i don't know if the college education changed but how the, i get two years free at this community college because there's thing called school counts and if i keep my grades a c average or above which is super easy i get to go two years to community college for free but i'm already coming out with 30 plus credits from my school so i only got to go one year to get my mm-hmm. associates so i'm okay, going for yeah. business entrepreneurship or business marketing i'm not exactly sure which one but definitely something with business i think business entrepreneurship because i just want to start my own business and work for myself be my own boss yeah and, dude, i think uh, like a university degrees are going to have less and less value as time goes on just because now you can learn everything without a university degree like you learn everything online so easily oh yeah 100 percent. and it's like university degrees are they're cool and like don't you know, like my my best friend i grew up with since i could remember and it's funny how we're best friends because this dude's a genius and i'm over here like i'm kind of smart but <laughs> he's going to harvard for free 
Wow. Or Good for him. It Good for him. Like, it's insane. And, like, what sucks about, like, like so hard, getting a Harvard education, it's super good. But also, it's not so much different from a community college. And I could be wrong, but colleges don't it's a, a degree is a degree. You're getting taught the same mm-hmm. stuff in your field. But it's so many people just look at the Harvard degree like, wow, that is so much better. She went to Harvard. But, well, because it's, it's prestige, right? Like you have to, it's all, I mean, what is it, like a 7%, accept, a, a, a 7% acceptance rates? So it's like very prestigious. You yeah. go there, you're, you're thought of a, a, as like an awesome person. Yeah. Not, not necessarily, just because education, it's, it might be different, yes. We can also learn different things no matter where you are. Yeah, that's true like when he told me i was so ecstatic excited for him it's like i'm so like the dudes the kids never had anything lower than like a 95 like the kids and he doesn't study like he well he has but not like he's just that smart huh he's just a genius and his parents are both smart but the thing is like (laughs) when you see his parents you wouldn't think they're all that smart because like their parents are super fun and like like my family but like they're geniuses too (laughs) <laughs> like they're the greatest people like they, uh, his dad texted me the other day because i was originally going to go in the air force i went to meps and everything mm-hmm. almost uh signed for it and like my that's my whole plan that's what i really thought and then they he texted me and goes oh i heard you're uh you're going to college now like we're so proud of you like you're super smart like no matter what anyone says like you're super smart like and like it just kind of called me off guard and like i'm not an emotional person at all and like that got me like i almost cried and stuff like that and it was like wow like that was cool and I, like i was so like it was so nice it was super nice and like i, I love it love it but um Good to hear, yeah, man. yeah this is going on for like almost an hour now yeah it's been an hour th- yeah, yeah i think we're gonna i think we're gonna wrap this up awesome man thank you for I, having me here drake i appreciate yo, it man thank you so much for being on here and thanks so much for pushing me to do this because it's Hell yeah, man. Do doing it. Doing the podcast yesterday. And like, I, oh my God, I wanted to do it. I've been so excited to do it. And, uh, <laughs> and it went way better than I thought. I've been so nervous all day. Like, I, I, like just going through scenarios in my head, like, oh, what if this happens? Uh, like, I think we did. Our, I think I did all right. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I mean, as far as first episodes go, yours was a lot better, a, a lot better than mine, like tenfold better than mine. I mean, it was awesome. You know, like Thank great you. conversation. Yeah. You, you know, a lot of shit, man. Yeah. Awesome. I think I need to talk a little less, but I'll work on it. It'll, it'll get better. I promise, guys. It'll get better. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for being on here, Allie. It was a no pleasure. No problem, man. Anytime. Let's do it again for sure. 100%. We definitely need to keep up with each other. Absolutely. Talk more. But all right, guys, this is it for the first episode. There's going to be many more. I might be posting once or twice a week. For sure, once a week. Maybe twice a week. I don't know yet. But all right. This is Drake. I'm signing off. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace.